Engraving jewelry with handwritten messages using the Xtool F1 Ultra. Today's engraving is performed by Alex Warner, the lead technical instructor from Sunstone Engineering. He will explain the step-by-step -step imaging and engraving process of the handwritten note, I love you by the parents, which is then engraved onto a gold filled connector that will be made into a necklace for their daughter. This video is filmed live in the technical lab at the Perma Jewelry Expo in San Antonio, Texas. I'm gonna leave more information about Alex, PJX, and the engraver used in this video in the description below. So in this case, I'm using a, a Microsoft Surface Pro with a pen. You can use a, an iPad or, or something equivalent to this. This particular program is just, uh, it's called Paint. It's what's a default program on the software. You can use the pen to capture handwriting. In this case, we have mom and dad. Great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna save it, I love you. Since we already saved it, I'm just gonna show that process. We're gonna enter the creative software. And to show how that works, we're going into our folder, into where I saved it in downloads in this case. And then I want to drop that in. It's going to have all this white background like we saw over there. And one of the cool things that I love that they've added to this software recently is this trace feature. It is limited to the amount of pixels that you have. See so a fine detail with a low pixel density? It's not going to look good at all. But in this case, we have a good amount, and it's relatively simple. So we're going to click trace. It's going to analyze it, and then you can see this highlighted preview around the text. That looks pretty clean to me, and so I'm going to hit save. So what this is actually doing is it's taking a picture and converting it into a vector. And vectors will always perform better than a picture. So if we go into our settings panel here, or sorry, our layers panel, we can see an image and a group. That group is that vector that we've just created. So I'm actually gonna delete the picture and then I'm going to hit engrave and you can see that those are now filled in. It will always default in the score, which is outline. But in this case, we want to fill it in. If we're working with a, a dark piece that we're going to be engraving on, or it's just hard to see, as you can see, we, we're not having a good definition there. We can right click on the layer. And at the bottom, we have a rainbow of colors that we can choose from. In this case, let's choose yellow. This isn't going to change the engraving color is simply for vis visual representation inside the software so that we can operate a little easier. So we're going to shrink this down and then we can use our two fingers on the trackpad in this case to zoom into our workspace. So are we going to do uh, I love you on one and I love you on, on the other side? Mm -hmm. or are we trying to fit both on here? No. Mom on one side, dad on the other. Gorgeous. So, since it's a one group, what I want to do is open that group and then say ungroup. So now we can click and drag over the I love you up above, and then we can right click and group that. And then And grab those and group that. So now we have two groups over here on our objects list. So now I can move that independently. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put that down there for now. And I might need to delete this in order to uh, have them not both engrave. But we'll see what we need to do once we get into it. So I'm really liking this so far. We're going to take that setting that we were using earlier 
and if we need to zoom in for a reference here, so 100, 1000, and then these are defaulted settings. I don't touch these. And then 300 millimeter, or sorry, 300 lines per centimeter. Since I want to make this a little deeper, I'm going to do the number of passes, and I'm going to increase that to six. So it's going to carve away six times, creating a, a, a higher depth in my engraving. So what I want to do is verify on the piece itself that we have it lined up proper. So I'm going to hit framing and we're going to select the group on our objects panel associated specifically with the I love you that's going to be on the pendant and it will isolate our our framing to just that so that we can line it up properly. So just as we're seeing here, if we look at it at two different viewing points, we can center it vertically and horizontally. And if we need to move it with arrows to do fine adjustment, then we can do that. I'm going to step in front of the camera for just a second so I can verify that. And we can come over just to the right a little bit, and I'm happy with that. All right. So in this case, I'm going to just get that out of the way so that it's not part of an engraved section down below. Now if we had different pieces and we could do multiples at a time, I might be interested in saving time that way, but we're just doing one pendant, so we're going to do it this way. So I'm going to hit process because I'm happy for where it is. Close the lid, as it's told me here. Always need a good reminder to be safe. And according to the software, it's going to take us eight seconds to accomplish this. So I'm going to hit start. It's going to send it to the machine. And we're going to do our final approval by pushing the screen button. Now that's done. So we can lift it up, so you can see that it's brown and kind of yellow. And so I like it to pop, so what we're going to do is we're going to change our settings just a little bit. We're going to reduce our power from the previously viewed setting down to 30% power, changing nothing else. And then we're going to process that again, we're going to get that same eight or seven or eight seconds, but we're just hitting it with less power. We're gonna lower that down for safety. Hit start, and if we get in real nice and close, we can see some magic happen. Let's lift it up. You can see that's more of a cream color. And so then we would just repeat that process with the other I love you, and then we have a good product to send out to our client. I used oh. the shortcut for cut, and then processed it, and then pasted it back. Okay. That's so what I did. So it's copy and paste kind of thing. Essentially. So I did a cut, which is control X. Yeah. Okay. Um, and if, say, you were, there were multiple, would you then save it somewhere else? Is it in, in the yeah, program? So is there a place I, to if save I, it? If I, if I wanted to approach it this way, I would have this as a separate file and this as a separate file, mm -hmm. and then I would import them separately. Okay. And so that way I can pull them in and maybe even have a different tab associated with it. So I go, this is one side and then that's the other. Okay. So I switch between two different tabs on the software itself. Okay. And that way, I can just hit run, 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 and just tag back and forth. It would be that extra copy, paste, cut, paste motion. So that's a lot to take in. So we just follow the steps that we just saw. 
it's just going to be more of a linear approach. And then if you find better ways to streamline the work, then feel free to branch out and do what makes sense for you. Great. Thank you. You're welcome.